nobody heard. Don't. So tonight, where is gold in Texas? We're going to talk about everything being big in Texas except for gold. Unless they're talking black gold. And then that's a whole different ballgame. But it plays a part in what we're going to talk about geologically speaking. So let me explain to you about what's going on in Texas. And uh, <clears throat> hint, fracking plays a part in some sense. It tells us a hint about what's going on. But I'll explain that in a second. So right now I'm just looking to make sure that you guys are tuning in and that Texas is showing up. There we go. Where is gold in Texas? Live. We have 13 folks. Okay, good. We're back. Uh, we had a little audio difficulty with Utah, but I will recover that and I will toss another Utah up here and, and it's a good excuse for you to go over and join me on Prospector Jess' channel on YouTube. There is a place beyond Facebook. It's called YouTube. You should see it sometime if you want to learn about prospecting. Now, um, again, uh, I bring that up because tonight we're talking about gold in Texas. Uh, let's go here. Don't forget to check out the, the GDU offer I've got here uh, at this link, sourdoughminer.com GDU. Check it out. Uh, that's part of what we're doing is kind of getting everybody aware of what the offer is. If you want to learn about prospecting in general, about this technique of map making, I include that as part of the thing. There's other stuff about rocks and minerals and elements of geology and what you're looking for, gold traps, water flow, hydrodynamics, uh, you know, you name it, uh, prospecting techniques, sampling techniques. It's all in the GDU, the Gold Diggers Underground Bonanza Club. And it's a discount on trial. It's only a buck. Give it a swing for 14 days and see if you like it. Um, money back guarantee 30 days so let me know what you think uh, that's just putting a plug in here and now so let's go back to Texas so looking at Texas um, where is gold in Texas well gold is in Texas in a couple of locations uh, both of which are kind of unusual one one is what you would expect remember we've been talking earlier with Utah a little bit with the basin and range in Nevada and what's going on up in in uh, Idaho, where there's areas with sparse gold and areas where there's gold concentrates. The gold tends to concentrate along those Horst and Graben, the up and down thrust faults with mountain ranges, and then and then they swing down and form valleys that fill in with the silt from the mountains eroding, and that silt covers up the gold. And so what you find is the locations that have the gold are typically on the rim of those mountains or up on the mountains. And that's the big hint for the that area which is also known as the Basin and Range. Now the Basin and Range geology, as I pointed out last time, let's go back to our handy dandy front cover, which I stole from the Utah one. Same plate holds true. This is a USGS map of geology. And again, you can kind of see in Texas, that's this guy right here, Texas can come to, and I'll probably really botch this something fiercely and somebody will call me out on it. But, you know, let's just say this is Texas. And I don't know, I probably messed that up something fierce, but you got the idea. So you can see immediately there's this section that kind of cuts in two over here. You can see we had this this property earlier where um, where we saw these mountains coming down through here. Draw a line here. And they continue on down into Mexico and South America. But what's happening here is that defines a region where you're likely to find gold to the west and not to the east so much. Except there is an anomaly right in here. And that's what I wanted to call your attention to is that anomaly presents itself as something kind of unusual right, right about in the center of Texas. Let's draw this right. So right in here and right in here there are two areas that I would expect to have the presence of gold because of the geology of the region, not the political lines. Here we go again. And so what we're going to do is take a look at what that looks like on our gold map. So remember, Horst and Graben, faulting and folding, relieving the stress of the, you know, the tension on the, not tension, but the compression on the Earth's surface, causing geologic upheaval, Mountains get built, they get worn down, the gold comes out of the load and the hydrothermal deposits that form along those faults and cracks. 
the volcanism that takes place because of what's going on underneath as as the Pacific plate dives under the continent of the U.S. and as other things happen, as we've talked about the caldera and heating, there's extra other thermal effects that can affect volcanism. But primarily volcanism is what's going to bring the gold to the surface, either in the form of minerals, remineralization such as in metamorphic, gneisses and schists and things like that, or in the form of, of intrusive hydrothermal deposits. They call them secondary hydrothermal. Um, and so those effects play the biggest role in bringing up metalliferous ores to the surface. Let's take a look at what happens in Texas. So now I flip to our... And so what we see is, remember, Central Texas. Oops, let's do this right. So I am going to go over here and draw on this board. Because um, I think I set it up to draw on it. Pick a nice handy color and real thick lines. And so here we go. Right in the middle of Texas, we've got this region where we've spotted some gold. Remember we talked about that because there's this chunk. There's a change in the geology that goes through this area, kind of right down through here. And then <clears throat> to the west, you see these? This is that, you know, sort of the Rocky Mountain syndrome plowing right through this region. And again, more horse and graben. Notice the slices with the little little playas, the little white sands and, and desert materials down in these areas, down right here. Okay, <clears throat> my mouse shows up on one screen, not on the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to investigate what's going on here on the west side. But primarily what's happening here is as we zoom in on these, you're going to see they, they, the relief and topology changes drastically. Uh, notice the mountains and, and folding similar to what we see in other places. And so there's all kinds of interesting desert looking material, very similar to what you see in the deserts in California and Arizona and Nevada. And that's what you're looking for when you're looking for gold. See this gorgeous trace here. Let me wipe out the whiteboard for the moment. It's messing things up. <clears throat> and so we see this nice trace going through here and embedded in that is some um, turquoise okay that's a silver ore and so we have copper silver and some gold okay and over here we have malachite a copper stone so both of those are stones but they have present with them copper silver gold and lead uh, copper silver gold and lead lead silver gold and copper so again malachite so a lot of interesting uh, stones in that area that are related to silver. They have it present in the, in the rocks. Um, up here we have uh, one that's kind of hanging in the periphery. A hazel mine. And it has a past producer of anchothite, bornite, chalcoite, chalcopyrite, covalite, galena, gold, Malachite, marcasite, pyrite, silver. So quite a melange of metal-related, metal remember we talked about associations, so the met, uh, ores that are associated with gold. And out of it comes commodity number one is silver and copper, and then a tertiary, number three, is gold and some lead. So it isn't primary producer of gold, but it has some gold, but it has a lot of silver. That's interesting. Um, so, you know, again, notice the coloring of the rocks and minerals in the region. Notice the relief. Let's turn on our, our handy dandy sunlight here and uh, this guy. And we'll bring the shadows out so we can see the relief better. Not a huge relief, nothing like what we were seeing elsewhere. A huge relief down in here. Look at that thing. Look at the cliffs. But up here, pretty flat. The main thing I see is a color change. Anytime you've seen color changes like that, you start looking. Now, gee, is that a big mine? I don't know. Looks like it's got a head work, so that's kind of interesting. But other than that, it doesn't look like a huge mine. Um, now, uh, it does look like somebody might have worked a mine over in here and something sampling over in here. So, so there's been some workings in the region. It only shows the one report. This is somebody's ranch is what it looks like. Um, and so that's that's that for now. Um, and that's pretty much it in that part of Texas. So mostly Southwest Texas is where it's at. 
again, your best bet would probably be to go to some adjoining area. Uh, this is Odessa Midland. Now, I, I told you about fracking. Well, this is like, you know, fracking headquarters right here. And so uh, when you're looking at Odessa Midland, uh, we've had a, two presidents came from Midland. Uh, so one of the things that you want to be aware of in this area is huge amounts of alluvial deposit, dirt and soil, which forms your your basis for all of your overburden. That overburden is miles and miles deep. And down deep inside of it is all kinds of shales and, and rocks and minerals that are mostly sedimentary in their original origin. They've hardened into sandstones and, and shales and maybe even so much as slates under pressure. And what they've done now is they've found that those shales can be busted up using fracking to the point where this is now also about to become the world's largest producer of oil and gas, period, even over OPEC, or even over Saudi Arabia. That's a pretty amazing move. Now, what does that mean for gold? Well, it means that there's a lot of minerals over the gold. There may be gold in this area, but it's down. And you're not going to, you know, there's no way you're going to dig through that. When they go after this oil, they have to go through special processes and all kinds of stuff just to punch a hole in there deep enough to put pressure on the rocks and minerals to cause them to crack and lift out, you know, pull the oil out. They, nobody pumps oil. They lift the oil. They actually have a little pumping jack that they, it's actually called a lifting jack. They will lift a little bit of oil and then drop down and, and each time it lifts only a little bit of oil and the stack above it is what has to be lifted. It's a lot of weight just to create essentially what would be the effective pressure because you're not going to pull it out of the rocks. The rocks basically will supply it at their own rate. You can only pull so much vacuum and then that's it. And so what fracking does is give you a little opportunity to, to, to open up the oil that leads into one of these wells so that it becomes more productive. The oil is always there. It's not like it produces more oil. It simply allows the oil to come in to one oil well and that that particular well can now become much more effective at producing oil for the money it takes to pull it out. If you don't do that, it's very quick before, you know, a hundred dollar barrel is, is nothing. Um, you know, it, it, you couldn't pay for the oil. And, and that says, says just a hint of what it would cost to pull the gold out of the area. So you, you don't want to mess with it. Now this area in central Texas, uh, we've talked about a little bit, I'll call your attention to, it's kind of unique in that a couple of these that I looked at had, uh, here's gold as an occurrence. Let me see what mineralizations we get. Gold, copper, gold, silver, similar to what's going on in the E, you know, west of there. Here's a uh, vanadium, bismuth, and vermiculite with gold. Now this one has fluorine and fluorite. So that, you know, again, we go back into making batteries and stuff with, uh, you know, and, and uh, feldspar, molybdenite, uh, muscovite. So there's a lot of interesting minerals that come up with the, you know, gold. Uh, what I had noticed earlier was some metamorphics, and that's what I was going to call it out, but I don't know where I saw that. <laughs> Probably one of the reports. But what that would tend to indicate to me is that, that there's some uplifting that has happened in the past there's some redeposition and crushing and and could be contact metamorphism that's where a, a volcanic activity a pluton or a or an intrusive magma body melted the stones and then they recrystallized that's a metamorphic uh, contact i mean you know contact metamorphism or if it's under a lot of pressure where overburden kind of accumulated and the stuff compressed and sat in a place where it got hot and remelt it again, that's a different, you know, then that's not a contact metamorphism, that's regular metamorphism. And so I just wanted to call out that nice and things like that, they're, they're kind of funny layered stones. You see them, they often get confused with granites. Uh, schist, the same thing, it's a, it's a metamorphic stone, but a finer grain. And so uh, what you're looking for in those cases is uh, the mineralization that was there before classified and sorted gold into bands, you know, similar to a pay streak, and then crushed it and melted it into the rock. And now you've got a secondary uh, mineral that has metamorphic properties, but it has a high enough concentration of gold to be interesting. And that's not unusual. Um, I can't find the evidence for that on this particular 
run, but I saw it in one of these mines in the center, and I just thought I'd call it out. So I'll mention it, and you can go hunt it down. How's that for a homework assignment? Uh, the government gold maps. So, uh, again, uh, we have our GDU offer. I don't know whether I mentioned that earlier, uh, but anyway, that's still available, so check it out. Um, I wanted to show you internationally what's going on in the same region because it's kind of fun. So let's say we, you know, really, really, really want to find out what stuff is around Ciudad Juarez and and uh, and parts west here, and uh, and we are daring and willing to go into the to the uh, desert in Mexico. Then we would look up the the areas because again, this is more of that horse and Robin kind of stuff mountainous range and lo and behold there's a bunch of you know here we go lead zinc and gold is secondary um klondike spelled funny silver and gold lead copper gypsum and hydrate um so the records uh, for your information the records that you find in the usgs uh record keeping are pretty good for Mexico uh, and a lot of the South American countries for that matter, but especially Mexico, very much uh, intact and lots of interesting information about what's been found. The problem with Mexico, as you can imagine, are, you know, legal and, and potential, potential conflict issues that didn't used to exist 10 years ago when you went to Mexico is a great place to visit. Now it's not so great, especially along this border. So I caution you, uh, caution flags on travel. Um, especially for something as wealthy as gold. The word gets out that you're looking for gold and they start looking for you. That's true of a lot of countries in Africa as well. So uh, take each of these with a grain of salt and a big chunk of research before you go into them to understand what, how safe you'll be because it's important to be safe. You know, it, uh, one thing you don't want to do while you're prospecting for gold is claim jump because you may, you know, you may as well be in a foreign country if you're on somebody's claim and then they don't take a shine to it and they've got a nice 12 gauge. Um, so it's one of those things that you just don't want to, you know, do without having done your due research and on safety and made agreements with the neighbors and made friends with them first. Um, and maybe write it down and have a contract that you can actually legally bind to. Um, so uh, with that, I just wanted to point out that there's a ton you know as in millions of ton uh don't know whether you can see it here i kind of painted them the wrong color is what it looks like let me let me change the color here just so i'll change it to the standard gold colored crosses here in mexico but you can see how just a whole lot right down this mountain range along along the coast there's even a fair amount uh, of gold out on baja which is kind of interesting to me even some out here on the islands offshore here Go figure. Gold and copper, calcosite, hematite. So that's it for tonight. Uh, gold in Texas. I just thought I'd bring up a little bit of international intrigue to go with it. Also, I sorry guys, but Texas is really big on oil. That's why I painted it kind of crude oil brown here. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's one of those things where they've got a lot of stuff, but not gold. So their best bet is to get into New Mexico. Uh, I wouldn't go into Oklahoma. I'd shift over here into Georgia, uh, or I'd go over to more likely go into New Mexico. You're going to find good gold there, uh, Arizona, New Mexico. Uh, as we said earlier, or up toward Colorado, you know, up in this area. But you're not going to find much in in Texas, even in the Panhandle, etc. You know, it's just that's the way it is. So that's it for tonight. Gold in Texas. Where is gold in Texas? Any questions? Anybody got questions? Let me know. Well, we still got a fair number of people hanging on. Okay, cool. Uh, that's that's us right there. And that's you down there uh, commenting. Let me know what you got. Oh, I got people commenting that they love the coverage on Idaho from Mountain Home. That's uh, Dana Lee Thomas. And uh, Manuel Gal Galindo says at a local pawn shop, that's where you find gold. Well, yeah, sure, you can find it there. Uh, but it's not as much fun, I don't think. Uh, what about Oklahoma? Uh, I'll be doing Oklahoma. I'm going to probably be uh, doing a few more of these in the 
kind of western United States and a little bit toward the north. And then what's going to probably happen is I'm going to cluster a bunch of them together because they tell more a story about where gold isn't than where it is. And, and so it'll be, I think, useful if we cluster a few of those states together. The problem is that for search purposes, it's better if I, if I go one at a time, especially on states that have a fair amount of gold or have a fair amount of interest in gold. By the way, one of my number one states in terms of interest in gold and gold prospecting is right here before us, Texas. Go figure. But these guys, I think, really like geology. And so in liking geology, it's a natural thing to be interested in gold and precious uh, stones. I didn't turn on and ask for other metals, but they would typically go along with the gold areas. Uh, what about Nevada? We did Nevada a few weeks ago. So check it out uh, down below or above in the news feed on hunting FOR gold page on Facebook or Prospector Jess on YouTube. Just subscribe or like the page in the case of Facebook. If you like the page, then when I put out a new live, you can come join me because it'll alert you. Uh, same thing on, on YouTube when I post a new post with a new thing. But Nevada's on both YouTube and on Facebook right now, and you can go catch it. Um, found gold versus Southwest, or uh, found gold in Southwest Oklahoma. And that would somewhat make sense, although it's a little unusual uh, given that, you know, we don't see any here in Texas on that same perimeter, but that doesn't mean there isn't any. Uh, how about La Jitas area? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, can you see where La Jitas is? Uh, Richard Foreman says, I guess I need to go to New Mexico. Probably. That would be a good bet. There's a lot of people who go out in New Mexico, especially, again, as, as you look at these maps, you can, you know, from what I've been teaching you, you should be able to start to see in your in your 2020 gold vision the appearance of these mountain and ranges and their effect on gold in the western United States. Whole different animal when you go to the east. Remember we talked about that before. They have mountains, but they're typically very worn down. So their mountain, you know, to them a mountain is 3,000 feet. To me a mountain is 14,000 feet. Big difference. Uh, and what it does is these guys, you have to look for the old trail traces of mountains. These old, old mountain ranges have now become more of hill ranges, but they have very widespread effect. And so you're looking for, for those areas and, and for the kind of gold belt that follows along on the east side of that. Uh, same property as what's happening in the west. It's just much more worn down. Okay. So that's, uh, that's kind of what we did tonight is Utah and Texas, but this is the Texas, uh, Texas Rangers edition for gold prospectors. And check out the GDU, the Gold Diggers Underground, Gold Prospectors Bonanza Club is what that is. And, um, and then you can also find out about this if you just want to just do the government gold maps, that's the GGM. So it'd be sourdoughminer.com slash GGM. And that's how I you know show you how I do all these custom maps and all that junk. It doesn't go into detail about this mountain stuff. That's more of what I start covering in the GDU. Um, so uh, that's it for now. Uh, and I will try to answer some of these questions in there. If you ask about specific locations, there really is not an easy way or enough time to go down each one of the places that people want to go. I would suggest that you take a look. It's a really good price on the government gold maps, seven bucks uh, or 17, depending upon you know what the offer is. But uh, you check and see, but you can build your own map of your own canyon. You can go right down just like I did here and shoot into one of these things. You know, if you want to go down into Mexico, into the real Mexico and look at Urachi. You'd find a little town up in here and you'd find a whole bunch of buildings. But somewhere in the past there was a silver mine that produced gold, copper, lead, and zinc. Go figure. Now I don't know what's produced up in here now, but that's what it used to be. Uh, and it was argentite, which means silver ore, with chalcopyrite. We talked about that over and over again. Galena, gold, silver, sphalerite, and, uh, and so forth. Epithermal vein. So there we go. Hydrothermal deposits. So if that is uh, good enough for you, it's good enough for me uh, tonight. We'll close on Texas. 
you know, with a hint of, with a touch of Mexico. It's Tex-Mex night, okay? <laughs> Prospector Jess over and out, and good prospecting. Good to see you again. Glad you joined me for a second round tonight with double headers again. Double header back to back. Hey, not too bad. Don't expect this every night, you know. I might not be able to do it. it takes a lot of stress on this brain. <laughs> good prospecting. We'll see you tomorrow.